Presented by ChargebackGurus.com Preventing Fraud and Chargebacks with Device Fingerprinting Back in the days of check fraud, brick-and-mortar stores used to post mugshots behind the cash register that said, Do not accept checks from this person. Not a very sophisticated anti-fraud solution, but it worked. In the era of e-commerce fraud and cybercrime, things aren't as simple. Online anonymity is the fraudster's best weapon and consumer demands for stricter privacy regulations have the side effect of making it even easier for fraudsters to mask themselves. However, device fingerprinting remains an effective and hard-to-evade method of identification. How can device fingerprinting be used to stop fraudsters and prevent chargebacks? Not every internet user can tell you exactly what a cookie is. But most of them know what you're supposed to do with them. Delete them regularly. The old methods of tracking identities online have fallen by the wayside as consumers grow increasingly alienated by invasive online marketing techniques and governments enact stronger laws to protect privacy, like GDPR. Unfortunately, what's good for the consumer who doesn't want to be micro-targeted by personalized ads on every website they visit is also good for the fraudster, who flits from site to site, testing stolen cards and engaging in fraudulent transactions. For merchants, it is hugely important to be able to detect and identify fraudsters before they make an illicit purchase. Chargeback rights can make consumers whole when online fraud occurs, but merchants are left bearing the brunt of the consequences. Lost revenue, fees, and a dangerous uptick to the chargeback rate that acquirers are closely monitoring. Device fingerprinting is a reliable and non-invasive way to assign persistent identities to the users who visit your website making it possible to spot fraudsters ahead of time and stop them from coming back. How does device fingerprinting work? A browser cookie is a bit like a name tag. You can give one to a visitor when they first come to your site, and when they come back later, you can look at it and recognize them. Likewise, deleting a cookie is as easy as peeling off a name tag. Device fingerprinting is more like a mugshot behind the counter. It detects the identifying characteristics of the device, operating system, and browser that the visitor is using to access your site. When you drill down to the specific versions, configurations, and optional settings that each visitor is using, Device fingerprinting becomes a very effective way of telling individuals apart. When device fingerprinting can be cross-referenced with data, such as the visitor's IP address or geolocation, it becomes virtually foolproof. Unlike cookies, you don't have to ask your visitor to store and present their device fingerprinting data to you. It's automatically sent by the hardware and software they use to browse the web. Can device fingerprinting stop fraud and chargebacks? Many forms of online fraud hinge upon the fraudster's ability to appear as though they are a legitimate user or customer. Device fingerprinting can make it much more difficult for them to do so. For example, consider account takeover fraud. This refers to attacks where the fraudster obtains a user's login credentials for an e-commerce site. They can then log in and take over that user's account, making purchases, transferring funds out, and otherwise exploiting their access for all it's worth. With device fingerprinting, the site can tell when the account is being accessed from a new and unfamiliar device and can alert the account owner, requiring two-factor authentication or place temporary restrictions on the account. Device fingerprinting is also very effective at stopping card testing fraud. 
Fraudsters can obtain large numbers of stolen credit card numbers in bulk, many of which will have been reported lost or stolen by the time they change hands. To find out which cards are still usable, they attempt to make small purchases with each one. Once a small purchase goes through, they know that the card is safe to use for a larger fraudulent transaction. With device fingerprinting active, a merchant can see when the same device has attempted several declined transactions and can safely infer they are engaging in card testing and block them from future purchases. Can device fingerprinted be circumvented? The simplest way for people to get around device fingerprinting is to switch up the devices they're using to access the web. This will make them appear to be a different user, as each device will have its own characteristic fingerprint. But it's not the most practical workaround. Most individuals don't have an endless supply of internet-capable devices to rotate through. At most, they might be able to swap between two or three different identities. But if they engage in fraud or other harmful actions, those identities won't be useful for very long. More trouble is the use of device spoofing software, which can alter the data that the user's device presents to websites. A fraudster might be running Safari on an iPhone, for example, but with device spoofing activated, the website they're visiting thinks they're using Chrome on an Android, and they can keep spoofing as many different details as they want in endless combinations. Fortunately, internet companies like Google are working on technology that can see through device spoofing attempts. As far as above-board avoidance of device fingerprint is concerned, it isn't something users have the right to opt out of, the way they do with cookies under the GDPR and other regulations. While some jurisdictions may place limits on what websites can do with device fingerprinting data, fraud and abuse prevention is generally considered to be a lawfully permissible use. Conclusion when a merchant receives a true fraud chargeback, it's already too late to do anything about it. Friendly fraud can be fought and beaten. But true fraud is what chargebacks were made for. Merchants have no choice but to take the loss. Online fraud is a difficult and ever-evolving problem, and merchants need every resource at their disposal to protect themselves and their customers from cyber criminals. Anti-fraud tools that rely on device fingerprinting to identify and block suspected fraudsters can help merchants avoid fraud attempts before they have the chance to turn them into chargebacks. To learn more, visit chargebackgurus.com.